Hi, this is Gab Goldenberg of ConversionRateOptimization.co. I'm here with Andreas Vanaitis uh, of RTOS.co.uk, uh, and they are a leading SEO agency. And what their specialty is, and I think this is very cool, we're going to talk about it today, is using artificial intelligence to drive traffic and especially engagement. And they have some very cool case studies I'm excited to hear from Andreas about and share with you guys today. So stay tuned, Andreas. Thanks for joining me. Uh, thank you for having me, Gav. Yeah. yeah, pleasure. So you've been doing SEO for a very long time, and Google is certainly you know very much driven by maths. I think you're probably one of the first agencies to also adopt that same approach to doing SEO. How did you guys come to, to that conclusion that that's where, it, where you wanted to take your services? That's a really great question. Uh, 13 years ago, there was no AI, uh, as far as I'm aware. Right. And um, I, I was, back in the day, it was all about setting up reciprocal links. And I don't know if you remember that. Yes. Um, <laughs> and getting as many pages as possible into your site. And uh, over the years, you know, the, um, it, bec it became more about setting up, uh, more about setting up um, websites, marketing channels to help you not only increase uh, the amount of traffic sources to your site, um, and and uh, as as the years rolled on, I found myself buried in spreadsheets right. in order to try and discern what ranking factors. Um, would help my sites and my client sites uh -huh. get to the top of Google. And I was doing what most people did, which was to look at what the leaders were doing sure. and then looking at what we're doing and seeing where the differences were. And I, I remember using um, statistical software like SPSS to try and perform these tests using using the pharmaceutical industry to to identify treatment effects. You know, if I if I increase the speed of my pages, do I get a higher ranking on average? Right. And I just found that, especially around 2010, I just thought to myself, well, there's so many factors. Uh, you know, you got you got web technology, which is changing. You know, there's increasing use of JavaScript. Uh, social media came along. Yeah. Um, there, there's all these new things that are complicating um, or, or complicating online marketing and then of course you know as as people we're becoming a lot more demanding in our expectations of what we want from websites and and the bar is being raised all the time exactly exactly less patience we expect things to load faster to be easier to use more intuitive and as the competition becomes more user-friendly that actually just makes people expect everybody to be more user-friendly and there's this this content. Uh, I don't want to call it a an arms race, but maybe a technology race, something like that. I think it's both a technology race and a, 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 a content race because I remember sure. when you could get away with writing fairly anonymous articles. Yes. Um, and nowadays, people expect to know who's writing this. Not only that, they want lots of research they want to know what even if you are famous they want to know well what are the stats or what's the data behind what you're saying right. so people you know they expect a lot more quality research sure. that goes that undergoes writing and and also the quality of the writing you know in terms of you know i, I it's my belief that seos you know we we used to provide preside over a number of things you know online pr how the site is designed, how, you know, we could even dictate how the content was written. Now, I think, you know, the, the SEO's role has become a bit more diminished because right. you have content strategists who dictate how the, how the, how the, how the content is written. You've got right. UX specialists that, that would do lab tests to sort of see how easy the site is for users to perform specific right. tasks. Right, exactly. You know? So the SEO has a lot, lot less say they can have an opinion, and I believe a valuable opinion, right. on all of these areas, including online PR right. uh, and content marketing. But um, in terms of 
actual decision making, I think that's been taken away from the SEO because ultimately, ultimately, I think they've been consigned to the to the the analysis of Google ranking factors, right? Uh, and also the uh, um, the technical optimization of the site to ensure that the content is searchable. Exactly. For the right keywords. Exactly. So you were you were putting together all this different data, and trying to figure out what on average is getting you uh, higher rankings. And so you and I were discussing some cool things that you guys were doing with analyzing the image widths on different websites, and you know how that is affecting rankings. And also something that I found interesting, you mentioned you're not measuring the impact based on correlation, which as we all know is not causation, you're using a different test. I think you called it the R-square test, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's right. So, so tell us about the whole image uh, height width analysis, what you guys did, what you measured, what came out of that. Okay, so uh, in general, when we try to analyze what's going on with a website and why it's not ranking or why the users are not engaging, um, we're approaching the problem in the same way a search engine does. So a search engine goes on the net, they go to a website, they're downloading all the content and all and in, and uh, graphing the site architecture and the hierarchy of information. And they're putting all this information together and then they put some statistics on each of those signals, if you like. And we're doing exactly the same thing. We're going to our clients' websites and we're going to their competitors' websites and we're, we're performing basic statistics such as, you know, what is the average number of words? What is the average reading age? What is the average image width, as you alluded to just now? Right. And then what we do is we say, right, okay, well, um, you know, can we prove in either direction that if we increase the image width by 10%, there will be a proportionate increase in rankings and and do we see the same thing if we increase it by 20 or 30 percent? Do we see a, mm. a, an even bigger increase in rankings? But we also want to test it in the other direction. So we look at sites ranking below our clients' competitors. So we want to see, you know, if we decrease that ranking right. factor, say image width by 10 percent in pixels, will we see a, a decrease, a proportionate decrease in rankings? And right. and that's how we make SEO and other marketing problems a lot more predictable. Right. Uh, it's not you know, just your opinion and the client's opinion, it's just this is what the maths say. Exactly. We, we want to take the ego out of the situation because I'm sure, as you know, Gab, um, when an SEO rocks up to a client board meeting and they're talking through their SEO audit recommendations, there's nothing that uh, infuriates the web development team and the web design team by saying, you know, you need to change this on your website. It's you're effectively saying it's your fault that the site's not ranking, and and uh, you know it makes it very difficult to build collaborative working relationships to yeah. help you look good as an SEO or an online digital marketing specialist. And with by taking a, a more statistical approach or a fact-based approach. It takes the ego out of the situation because you're no longer saying you're rubbish. You're saying, okay, well, this is what the data's found, and this is, this is, these are our findings, which are statistically validated. Right. How do we work together to exploit the statistics? You know, right. and they they come to their own conclusions. They they make the the recommendations are already forming in their mind as you present. Right. Right, the and then you can just encourage them. That's such a great analysis. Like when the data sort of leads there anyway, so it's a win-win. They can they can look great, and you can look great, and you know all the Dale Carnegie how to win friends and influence people principles are, you know, working smoothly there to to win the client's trust and his team's trust. So you're not fighting them to get the changes done. You're not fighting them to get the contract signed. They're just like, oh, this is this is great work. Let's move on. Very much so. I, I'd say in 98% of cases, you know, unless uh, the developer is truly egotistical or the content strategist, um, um, if you're working with good companies, especially developers, uh, they, they come from a, a computer background. So 
they already have an inherent respect for numbers and data and right. and statistics. Right. So uh, you're 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 using the the language that they're, they're familiar with. comfortable with. Yeah, right. absolutely. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I didn't I didn't make that link. That's very interesting. So, so with the case of the of the image west, what what recommendations uh, came out of that? What did you conclude? Well, we it wasn't so much our conclusion; it was our machine learning algorithm. That's that concluded right. Concluded that two hundred sixty eight pixels was the minimum pi image width, um, where the client was, I believe, around two hundred thirty seven pixels. Right. Um, they had. The, the machine machine learning algorithm said, you know, you need to increase it to a minimum of 268 pixels. Right. And that was for, if you imagine an e-commerce site, that was for their, their, right, their images, their, their product images that are listed on a category page where you have oh, wow. about three or four per row. And sure. Sure, sure, sure. Very interesting. So the, the recommendation was to increase it to at least... Uh, 268 uh, pixels. Yes. Now, um, you you mentioned earlier the the R squared test and that it showed that this was 68 percent. I don't know if responsible is is the right word, but predicted to a 68 percent degree the the rankings. Yes. And so looking at this could be quite determinative and potentially quite impactful. Yeah, so we use the R squared to help us because we'll find a number of signals that can that the client that's specific to the client industry. Right. And um and we need a way of prioritizing which things they should work on. Sure. And so the R squared um is effectively the percentage probability that this ranking factor or signal can explain the variation in rankings for the clients and their competitors. Right. So the, the closer it is to one, the right. higher the probability that yeah. uh, they should go for it. And anything above 35% um, is considered statistically significant. Right. Right. So 68% um, is really quite uh, quite high. That's it is quite high, thing. and so, and we measure that by uh, taking the average square distance between the data points and the line of best fit. Right. So for those of us who don't have a statistical background, what is the line of best fit? The line of best fit is um, if you have a scattering of data points on the graph, the line of best fit is is the line that is probably uh, the most equidistant line that runs through all these data points. So uh -huh. um, to try and use more friendly terminology, it's it's the line that is um, uh, it, it's, it's the connects line... the dots as much as possible basically yes, while yes. keeping while being more or less straight. You've done a much better job than I have. <laughs> no, I see what you're saying. Okay. I, I mean I also had the benefit of seeing the graph earlier and we'll share that below in the blog post. So that's very cool. You also mentioned something quite interesting I found with regards to engagement. You need to go, okay, I'll pause this. So you were telling me about this case study where you guys used your artificial intelligence software to measure how you could increase the engagement on visitors' landing pages, right? Reduce the bounce rate, get, get visitors sticking around a lot, and obviously more likely to convert. So what exactly were you measuring and how did that get applied? So for a property portal based in the UK, um, what we did was we took a data dump of the Google Analytics. Uh, we were looking at URLs and we were also uh, tasked with trying to consolidate the page rank or link equity, if you like, um, on their website across their pages. Right. And considering the site has got hundreds of thousands of pages, wow. we needed a, we needed a way to consolidate that page rank in a very smart way. And now, <laughs> exactly, um, and to save us a bit of time and to make our recommendations statistically validated, we um, we used some uh, decision tree based algorithm 
to to help us uh, prove that uh, to help us quantify, if you like, the uh, the first of all classify the different types of pages on their website, and then look at the average and median uh, session times for each of those pages. And what we were able to show was that certain pages had a higher average session time than the other. Interesting. And that, that, that yes, it, because it, it saves us a lot. You know, when you're dealing with very large sites, uh, this is where machine learning comes into its own. You do have to exactly. train the algorithm to, to spot patterns. But when deployed at scale and when it's accurately trained or fine-tuned, um, you can you can use it to save a lot of man hours. Right. And we were able to propose based on the machine learnings, uh, the, the the decision trees findings, we're able to identify pages uh, that that should be uh, disallowed from uh, from Google. Right. And it was only wrong by like. Two percent. It was ridiculously accurate. Wow! So ninety-eight percent of the pages that it recommended to disallow were low engagement pages, and accordingly, you could redirect all your page rank to the pages that were engaging visitors, that were leading to conversions, and basically yes. boost those high-performing pages higher in the rankings to bring in more traffic. Exactly. That's and that's remarkable. Go on. And, and the two percent that um, that we disagreed with, we we just saw as content that could be repurposed or re right. I don't want to use the word re-engineered because that, that assumes some form of automation, but it could be redesigned and re redone by content strategists so that the engagement rates would be higher. Interesting. So I mean, machines can't do everything, but they can do a lot of the heavy lifting, and and they can get us by. And when we did. You know, it's just amazing that one recommendation um, increased the average ranking of this property site by 68, uh, an average of 68 ranking positions across 588 keywords. Wow, that's phenomenal. They must have had a humongous boost in traffic. Yes, yes, nice. very much so. We, nice. we do debate um, uh, how much of the boost, but they, they do agree that at least over 208% um, Wow. It was the minimum impact. Wow, minimum impact, two hundred eighty percent. Yeah, I think it That's was not a lot too shabby. More, but, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, well, I, I'm using data science to sort of show otherwise, but sure. Um, sure, but who's hey. arguing? If they want to say two hundred eight percent, okay, we'll we'll put that on our CV. Fine. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. I hear you. That's lovely. Okay. So if people want to find out more about RTOS and your services, your artificial intelligence. It's artios.co.uk, spelled A-R-T-I-O-S.co.uk. Almost, Gab. Oh, I'm sorry. It's artios.io. Dot I-O, excuse me. Okay. Yes. Artios.io, A-R-T-I-O-S dot I-O. Yes. And are there any particular blog posts or, you know, white papers, resources on your website you would recommend people who are interested to find out more about that they might start with? Definitely. We found um, a couple of them that are quite popular. There's the Google Users Maths, and uh, your, your agency should too. And that okay. explains how we do the hypothesis testing in, in uh, quite a bit more detail. Okay. And Very we also cool. did a, a slide share with a transcript on, on the blog, uh, which also gives a more kind of um, a more user accessible way of. Uh, showing how we make Google more predictable. Wow. So, yeah, that, that's quite interesting. And we've got that page rank um, post. Which, exactly. And we are, we are, we will be doing more on how we use, how we use the machine learning to improve keyword research. And wow. that's coming up. And Very we're nice. also showing, yeah. And my, my favorite one actually is how we used artificial intelligence to generate SEO recommendations. Really? That's lovely. Well, send me the links. We'll share them uh, below with readers. And thank you so much for sharing your time and uh, insights with us. Thank you, Gab. It was a pleasure. It was my pleasure, Andreas. Thanks for joining us. Brilliant. Take care. Take care. Bye.